Hey, hi team. Uh, hi all. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, thank you uh, for being here with us. Uh, we have all gathered here today uh, to discuss this industry that is facing the most profound impact from the crisis. Uh, there is a severe human and financial stress uh, from battling this infectio infectious disease that we are going through. At the same time, not to dwell on the negative, but looking forward, we definitely believe that healthcare is going to emerge stronger, nimbler, and definitely anti-fragile. I will talk about how the entire healthcare landscape is witnessing massive disruption, a disruption that is not short term. I will talk about how India will play a central role in enabling this transformation across the different players in healthcare value chain. What we have already noticed is a significant increase in spending on new treatments and vaccine programs to the tune of billions of dollars. The cost of just one single vaccine is close to about $5 billion. And as you all know, we have close to about 50 vaccines that are under active development. Going forward, governments, corporates, and the like will look at future proofing and increasing pandemic preparedness. There will also be a tremendous focus in bringing forward efficiency and improved access to healthcare. All of this will require a fundamental remodeling of existing processes and an accelerated adoption of digital technologies. We estimate that the spend will grow by at least 40% in the next five years, and that amounts to close to $3.2 billion. And $3.2 billion is actually the size of the India's entire GDP. The most pertinent point uh, within this spend for all of us gathered here is a disproportionate amount of spend that will be going towards implementing digital use cases across the entire healthcare value chain. Increasing maturity of next generation technologies and their ability to drive innovative use cases will propel digital adoption in this space. Most experts believe that the growth of digital spend uh, will be five times the overall healthcare spend in the immediate future. And this spend is going to be across five key digital use cases and top three key technology areas. The first one is telex or tele everything, which includes services and experiences that are delivered remotely we know how there is currently an explosion of teleconsultations or telehealth services. I will look at this more closely in just a while. Contactless, the entire ecosystem is working towards contactless in some form or the other. For providers, it may mean automated practice management or revenue cycle management. For payers, it translates into automated sales, operations, and customer service. Intelligent workplace is all about digitally empowered workplaces from frontline to back office workers. Robots have a key role to play when it comes to making hospitals intelligent. In the past few months, we have witnessed various instances of robots doing lower order tasks such as sanitation to more complex activities such as diagnosis recommendations and triaging for radiologists. Our friend Amit from GE will add a lot more detail on these aspects, I'm sure, uh, on, in his session. A year ago, many of the use cases that are now in the practical realm of healthcare were almost science fiction. COVID is almost the black hole that has time warped all of them into reality. I'm sure you're all watching the dark series in Netflix. Digital Thread. Digital thread plays a key role in product development lifecycle from chip to cloud. By seamlessly integrating across digital twins and industry 4.0 technologies across the workflow, medical device manufacturers and pharma companies will increasingly adopt the digital thread to drive efficiencies in the manufacturing productivity. Next-gen governance, we have been discussing smart cities for a while now. This has never before uh, been a more sense of urgency than now in adopting these technologies to allow population monitoring and eventually creating pandemic proof cities. There are a whole set of research papers written on this and I'll not go too much into that. 
All of these focus areas will be enabled by three very key uh, enabling technologies, AIML, IoT, and robotics. Billions of dollars have been spent in the healthcare system uh, across these three technologies. And we believe that with the increasing maturity of technology and a plethora of use cases that require digital intervention, an all pervasive transformation in the healthcare ecosystem is definitely inevitable. Hospitals have been spending on new digital products and services in the wake of changing business models to value-based care and changing consumption patterns to virtual care. COVID has placed a significant burden on hospitals, but they are being simultaneously forced to invest in digital transformation. They are dealing with this conundrum in a very interesting fashion. As the patient journey unfolds, even before admission, from preventive services and extends beyond recovery and monitoring through an enhanced patient experience. At every stage of the digital journey, uh, of the healthcare journey, digital has percolated. I'm sure a lot of us have already used platforms such as Ask Apollo for triaging and booking our uh, practitioner appointments. The way patients interact with caregivers is being significantly disrupted, and we will look at telemedicine in the next slide. Even before the pandemic, hospitals such as Mayo Clinic, Cleveland were pioneers when it came to transformative in, uh, initiatives. Cleveland, for example, developed Cologene, a diagnostic prevent prediction software uh, for decision support focused on genetic and lifestyle cases. We have Mayo Clinic's eConsult telehealth platform that has helped them significantly reduce patient readmissions. The pandemic has created a sense of urgency to have automated practice management and remote management as well. Robotic surgery is a futuristic sounding use case uh, that is seeing incredibly fast adoption. In conjunction with TeleX, robotic surgery has the power to fundamentally disrupt the paradigm of surgical procedures. Earlier this year, Western General Hospital in Edinburgh became the first hospital in Europe to perform minimal access surgery using Versius, uh, which is a surgical robotic system developed by CMR Medical. NHS hospitals are expected to widely adopt this during the year. And the Versius ro robot is actually portable, which basically means a surgeon can perform uh, the procedure from anywhere on a patient that is possibly in any location. Beyond admissions, treatment, and monitoring, providers will also invest towards delivering an enhanced user experience for patients throughout the journey. We already have digital patient experience platforms from firms such as Change Healthcare. It focuses on bettering patient experience by almost offering an Amazonish uh, shopping experience for patients across consultants, for tests, and for procedures and gives the same features wherein you can give a rating and feedback for the practitioners and the procedures that you have availed uh, them from. I want to spend some time on the most radical of these disruptions, uh, which uh, we believe is telemedicine. We had a very interesting webinar just a couple of days back, uh, and it starred the digital owners and the telemedicine owners from the top US hospitals, including Mount Sinai, University of Florida, Herman Memorial, Cleveland uh, Clinic, and Centara. These folks witnessed an unprecedented spike in televisits from below 1% in February 2020 to about 80% in uh, April 2020. There was clear agreement within all the panelists that this is going to be the new norm. There has been partly possible due to unprecedented relaxations in government regulations. More than 20 states have relaxed regulations, approved 80 plus telehealth services since March 2020. Earlier, doctors were mandated to be in a physical, physically uh, co-located position, and uh, they were supposed to be regulated within, uh, uh, within a particular environment, which was basically the provider environment. Only existing patients uh, were allowed a televisit. All of this has been completely done away with, with the US government, which is, uh, which has taken away these regulations and also passed bills that are going to 
encourage telemedicine going forward. There has been also a 5x growth in global VC funding in the last uh, six months. Telehealth platforms such as Amwell have raised $200 million. Not just VCs, but private equities are also playing a very active role here. Uh, I know the private equity role is not always um, looked upon very well, uh, but they play a very crucial role, uh, especially when it, when it comes to consolidating and, and ensuring that there is seamless integration across different components of the value chain. Furthermore, the m and activity in this space has uh, witnessed a very quick uh, and fast uptick. Uh, between Teledoc and AMN Healthcare, they have spent an excess of $1 billion since COVID to broaden their reach. I cannot help but compare the rise of this disruptive ability of telehealth to what Uber did to the automotive world and the taxi industry. Historically, the marketplace for taxis was straddled with regulations and restrictions to entry, local customer access at all. Ride-sharing platforms completely disrupted this, uh, led to price war, uh, and a completely different technology-driven customer experience. It eventually led to a fundamental alteration in not just the way it's consumed, but also buying patterns. And we will see that likewise in telehealth as well. Uh, Uberization of healthcare will have huge benefits for the end customers or patients in this case. And hence, once it has been set into motion by COVID, this will be extremely hard for anyone to stop. Payers, pharma and med devices firms are definitely not far behind in this particular transformation. COVID has exacerbated the need for lean payer operations, faster and efficient claims processing. RPA has emerged as a go-to technology for payers and has witnessed significant adoption. Payers are now forced to kind of reimagine the entire way of operations through RPA and intelligent automation. They seek to automate the trifecta of sales, operations, and customer service with an increased focus on self-service portals. Smart and connected medical devices will play an increasingly larger role in the future to come. Remote monitoring and tech, both wearable and implantable, will become an everyday part of our lives. The increased penetration of connected devices mandates an underlying foundation of cybersecurity to alleviate the concerns around usage. The entire uh, pharma value chain uh, we believe will undergo disruption and a pervasive adoption of digital technologies. Uh, I will spend time on only a couple of them. The first one is drug discovery. Uh, we believe that AI-led drug discovery will be the way forward. Uh, many organizations have already seen the benefit of using deep learning models to predict the structure of proteins associated with COVID and hence almost simulate uh, the, and predict whether a particular vaccine will act or not. Outside this, if you look at uh, the entire clinical research and pharmacovigilance space, uh, the need to accelerate uh, the clinical trials will definitely translate to a lot more automated workflows, uh, increase in real-time visibility, plus uh, all the things around IoT, uh, IoT-enabled pills, uh, ingestible sensors, etc., will ensure uh, that the patient data, especially on AE or adverse events, FX detection will get captured very soon. And finally, on the not so uh, major technology portion, if you look at the sales, uh, most of the sales activities of pharma companies is driven through direct sales. All of that is going to be passe. Uh, they have to uh, reinvent digital workflows uh, for interaction between a medical representative and physician. Uh, well, uh, will there even be medical representatives? Uh, that's food for thought. Uh, finally, uh, one of the things that I, we fundamentally believe is that India is poised to play a pivotal role in enabling innovation for the global healthcare industry. India houses capabilities for the entire ecosystem. We have a strong manufacturing ecosystem. India exports med devices of more than $2 billion, uh, and this is slated to double in just four years. When it comes to pharma, India is a hub for pharma APIs as well. Uh, in fact, 30% of US APIs are imported from India. We have a very strong manufacturing corridor across India. 
Our healthcare providers such as Fortis, Medanta, HCG are among the best in the world when it comes to infrastructure, physicians and facilities. In fact, we have Dr. Rao from HCG just after this session and I'm sure he will give us more details around the same. The top 10 pharma companies, the top 10 devices companies, uh, even the largest of healthcare giants are all present in India. India has rapidly become one of the preferred destinations for clinical trials as well. A large, heterogeneous uh, patient pool, educated physicians, and a very clear structure on regulations provides immense uh, cost benefits and competitive advantage to India as a CRO destination. Further, velocity in patient recruitment has further helped build uh, faith in India's CRO capabilities. We have a burgeoning startup ecosystem and it deserves to be the last, but definitely the highlight slide uh, of my entire keynote. We have uh, at least 16 startups in just the last couple of years that have raised $50 million each. And we expect four to five of these startups to achieve unicorn or a billion dollar valuation status in just about 12 months. Uh, these startups include teleconsultation, pharmacy, patient health data analytics, you name it. Uh, they are present across the value chain. National health stack is going to be a game changer. In fact, we have a session almost dedicated to it. Uh, Sanjay Jain will talk about how health stack is going to transform how India plays a very important and a key role uh, in enabling this transformation. Initial testing environments have gone live at at least five organizations, uh, and these are now enabling really good solutions to be built out. Just as UPI revolutionized uh, financial services, NHS holds the promise of delivering healthcare to 1.3 billion people at a fraction of what it costs in the US or in UK. NHS will open markets for startups and large organizations alike. Net -net, India provides an ideal field for healthcare disruption. It has a huge talent pool base. It has a low paying propensity uh, or, and ability of people to consume all technology. Uh, it has an increasing focus on quality of life, uh, huge adoption of digital and presence of immensely talented, high technology uh, capable talent. Health tech startups uh, is just a reflection of what we can achieve uh, if we uh, decide to be creative and innovative. I'm sure the distinguished speakers and panelists uh, that will follow will not only bring this topic to life, but also provide clear and actionable insights that each of you can use in your respective businesses. Uh, thank you very much and hope you all enjoy the sessions going forward. Thank you.